of the useless crafters. So today we are doing Cinderella to match Snow White. So she's 48 inches and you can see like on a cake table it'd be ridiculous. Um, she is humongous, right? And Cinderella is going to be right next to her. So you can see my daughter is five and a half and she is just under 48 inches. So this is going to be like, um, I, she already took a picture here so she loves it. But I wanted to create like a little game for her. Um, I did have a couple questions when I did this one, what the back looked like. So you can see at 48 inches, we basically had to glue together um, two foam boards because it's just too long. But it's really stable. You saw it standing propped up there. Um, and it looks pretty clean. I'm, I just use a Cricut X-Acto knife. So we'll get to that at, towards the end, though. That's the last step. So, all right, let's get started. Um, all right, so a couple tools that we're going to need today is um, I am using a full-size hot glue gun. So this is Monvict. It's on my Amazon account. So if you um, want to check out the list of all the products that I use that I buy on Amazon, it's amazon.com slash shop slash the useless crafter. And it's organized by projects. So um, hopefully you like it that way. I like it that way. <laughs> um, all right. You have that. And I love, it's so funny. Um, I get a lot of questions on my products. This is We Are Memories Quick Stick. This side is like putty, so it picks up all the small pieces. At 48 inches, we don't have a lot of small pieces, but it's always nice to have just in case. And then this side is nice because you can kind of push the glue, um, which brings me to the next topic. I don't like to use glue glue, so I end up using scotch tape, double-sided tape, um, and I like my glue runners, like glue tape runners. The Tombow, and this is Elmer's. I don't care too much about the brand, well, because I like both brands. Um, I have the big glue gun thing, uh, or the tape runner, but it's so heavy and it's kind of bulky, so that's why I don't use it. What I'm going to use after I finish my bulk purchase um, is I'll probably get an actual tape dispenser that's just on my desk, but I do love my double-sided tape. All right, so let's get started. So you can see, oh, no, no, wait, let me hold on. Let me change the camera. All right, so this is my top view. Um, you can see I have it laid out, but she's 48 inches. This thing is 36 inches, so obviously some things are off the board. But I basically cut on the Cricut. This is, uh, I have the maker. This is 65 pound cardstock that I buy, I buy black and white whenever it's on sale at Joanne's. Um, I used to say 65 pound or 110 pound, whichever is cheaper, but the 110 pound cardstock is much harder to cut. It makes your blades dull faster, and I don't always get a clean cut. Then I got to recut. It's just a time waster. Um, so I like 65 pound paper for the background, and all the other cardstock that I'm using today is Cricut. Um, don't buy it now. <laughs> just follow me and wait till it's 40% off. It will be 40% off, and it'll be worth it. Um, and then you can use my link at that point. <laughs> all right. So first step is. With the black background, what you want to make sure you do is now we're going to flip everything over because we're going to tape from behind. If you think about it, that behind is going to sit on the foam board, okay? So just kind of flip everything over and then just double check your work because I um, tend to make a mistake here. So just make sure that everything lines up. And there are a couple steps that I did differently with this off the mat, and I'll just talk through it right now just so that you know. Um, if you remember, if you watched the design space tutorial, this thing is not cut evenly up um, halfway, which I normally do. The head, I just moved over because I saw the head fit on a one piece of cardstock. So I kind of, even though, so this was basically 10, 11 by 11 squares that I stacked up to slice up this piece, right? And normally it's right down the middle or however I change it, but it, it usually stays like that. But because she's kind of angled her head in the middle, she had her arm out, I shifted the blocks. They were still two 11 by 11 pieces, so like this, right? They were all, you normally they're stacked like two columns of five rows, so 10 of them. But this time, some of the rows were, tilt, were scooted over so just keep that in mind. Um, and that was done so that we had less seams 
Um, and I'll try to walk you through that in design space um, when we do that. All right, so I messed up here because, or did I? No. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right, so with this, you want regular tape, regular scotch tape, and all we're doing is two pieces at a time, we're gonna tape them up. So the way I like to tape it is, for instance, we're gonna do these two, line it up, and this is also another reason why we do the, um, the flush squares, because when you line it up like this, it's so easy to make it seamless because you can push it up against each other and they fit perfectly. So, all right, so we're just gonna do this. Okay, and now we're gonna do the foot to this. So just piece by piece, we are taping this together. So you want to hold one up, push it up against the other piece, and then kind of hold it together while you tape it down. And Cinderella, I mean, this piece, I loved working on her. There are a couple new um, tips that I have to make her seamless, and I'm excited to show you that. Um, today is my one year anniversary of making my first off the mat, and that was Ladybug. Um, I don't know, if you follow me on Instagram, you can see the pictures. But it's so funny, I remember the first time I made Ladybug, I had lunch with my college girlfriends and I actually brought it with me to the hotel brunch because I was so in love with it. It had a bazillion scenes. There's one like right across her cheekbone and I'm like, what was I thinking? There were like um, a whole like X down like her crotch area. Like, could I make that any worse, right? Like. Your eyes are drawn to there. It's, uh. <laughs> so we've learned a lot since then. So I want to share my tips with you. Um, all right, so we're almost done taping here. Now the other thing that when you're taping this together to keep in mind is this middle section right here, there's going to be stuff sitting on top of it. It's her blue skirt, her blue top, but where you're not going to have anything I overlapped it too much, but that's okay. We're not gonna notice it. But what's not covered is the edges. So there's gonna be like a quarter of an inch of seams that will always be showing. Now it's not gonna be noticeable, but what you wanna make sure is you take down those seams so that there's no chance of it having any movement because any movement will draw your eyes towards it. Um, all right, so I'm gonna scoot this down and let's do this. Now, normally, you may be wondering why I'm using this glue gun, and I did turn it on. Okay. It's because uh, with off the mat, we are going to glue her whole body to the foam board. And um, the last couple times, I, I have a favorite glue gun. It's the Shore Bonder one because it has, it's cordless, um, it has a stand, and it has a little, like, drip catcher, <laughs> which I love. Um but it's too small. I had to reload that thing so many times that um, I do recommend having a full-size glue gun for this project. I mean, we all have extra glue guns lying around, but I like this one because it, it works for five minutes without um, being attached. So it's cordless for five minutes, I guess you wanna call it that. Um, so I do like that about this one. And I like that it just, stands because we I, I don't want to get accidentally burnt um i don't want to scorch my table either or my project so i like that it has a stand okay we're almost done here we have one more piece i'm gonna slide her down just even a little bit more so you can see this and her head normally would have been cut in half right but um it all fit on one page, so I just scooted the square over as we're slicing it. All right, so here we go. So we got that down. We just want to go to the edges and tape down the edges. And my husband's going to kill me. This is supposed to take photos. <laughs> I've got to get my process down. This is this is going crazy. All right, so 
we've taped down everything. Now I would just put a few pieces of tape here and there just to make sure it's a sturdy piece. But I'm going to pick this up. And I'll flip the camera so you can see what it looks like. I'm not, like I said, I'm not concerned about how this is taped up. I do like the edges being taped up because that's where the seams are that, that we can't cover. And then this is what the front looks like. Okay, but the front, we're gonna cover it with stuff. So I'm gonna lay her down front side up and we're just gonna piece her together. So unfortunately, she's so big that you're not gonna see everything at one time, but it should be okay. All right, the other thing I want you to notice is I'm going to scoot this down so that you can see this. Okay, I'm going to scoot down to the face. We're going to work on the head first, the head and the hair. So, let me scoot this out of the way. Okay, is she in? Almost all in. Okay. Um, here are all the cut pieces for this. So you can see it's so cute, right? Um, I want to talk about a few things because I did <clears throat> alter the image a little bit in doing this. The first thing is, I mean, Cinderella was so easy to work with because of the few things that we that we did in design space. So this is her the top of her hair, right? It was originally three pieces. It was this piece. Sorry, let me scoot this down a little bit more. It was this piece, this piece, and this piece. So what we did was we added a little circle right here and we welded it so it's one piece. It's nice to be able to keep track of just one piece versus three pieces, okay? So let's put that down. Then the other thing is this here was actually one piece. It was supposed to be like this, but it was going to be too big to cut on the Cricut with a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. So what I did was we did a deliberate slice and I'm calling it a deliberate slice because now it looks like her hair should be in three pieces. It's the puffy part and then a side bang, like a side part and then her hair. So that does not look like it wasn't supposed to be. What I didn't want to do was have it with a seam because then you're going to notice the seam. If I move it over a little bit like this and I slice it like that, then it's a deliberate piece. It's Her hair is in three pieces, so it is seamless. <laughs> All right, so that's one thing. The next thing is her face. So if you can see right here, there's a seam running down the middle of her, of her face, which probably would get her mouth, okay? So I'm going to just put this over like this. The seam, yeah, the seam would have gone through her mouth, but now what we did was we made a copy. You take this piece, you make a copy, and you contour out so that it's a blank black piece. And then that way, it goes right behind this, on top of this piece, covering all the seams. So now your mouth, your mouth has no seams in it. So it just really helps with the overall piece of there are just no seams. All the seams that, that you have are collectively on the side, like little pieces that no one's going to notice because there are no seams in the middle of it, okay? All right, so here's her face. We're just going to put her down. And she, I mean, she's so cute. Um, all right, and then this is her earring, which I really love because if you can see... Um, this is her, look at her earrings match. Um, so I did the same colors for everything. Um, okay, so now we're just going to start piecing her together. Let's put down her neck. And right now what we're doing is we're just making sure that everything fits into place and that the outline is even everywhere. Because you want to make sure before we tape down, I 
highly recommend you do this because every single time I've made some adjustments and it would have looked horrible um, if we didn't do it beforehand. So I know she doesn't all fit on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoot her up because now you've seen the face and the hair. Let's see. So now her eyes are still in the frame. Okay. That should be good. And then let's get, I know, and I'm really bad at puzzle pieces. Okay. And I'll show you because I don't know if you can see it on here, but I'll talk about all the seams. Um, when I pieced her together to take pictures earlier, um, she looked really good, really, really seamless. So it's going to be, I think, difficult to see on camera. All right. Um, and there's a really cool part about, I'm going to talk about the paper grain today. <laughs> um, so that should be a funny conversation. Um, we're almost done here. Let me put a few more pieces so I can see where everything goes. Okay, the other thing that I did was, this is her top, and like this. it was in three pieces, and I made it into one, so that makes it, I mean, a couple reasons that makes it easier, right? One, instead of three pieces, it's one piece, duh, but two, it automatically then lines up for you all three pieces. Instead of trying to fiddle with three and making sure it's all balanced, it's one piece, so it's much easier to handle. Um, I welded it right here and right here. So between her hair and this, we cut down on, you know, four extra pieces. So, so every piece was like really big and really easy to work with. I loved this. I love this image. What am I doing? Why am I struggling with this piece? Okay. <laughs> what? Okay. There's your top. All right, then you have these two pieces. Oh, maybe that's why her hair didn't fit. All right. See, it's all starting to come together, right? Now, this skirt, I'm so happy with the outcome. So the skirt is actually in three pieces. It was our biggest piece on here. But what I did was, um, and I didn't do this in design space, like in the tutorial, because I thought about it last minute after I was already done recording. Um, so her skirt is one piece. So obviously what we did with the hair wasn't going to work with this because it would look really weird like this, right? Like a deliberate seam, like that doesn't look good. Um, but what I did was I sliced it with a circle so it's not like just a straight line because I felt like that would be more obvious but take a look at that that seam where is it oh right here I can feel it that seam is gone and the reason is because on your sheet of paper there's a grain or like think of it like fabric that's how my husband explained it to me he's a furniture maker so when you're doing fabric like you know how you rub your couch like this, <laughs> and then it turns like a slight shade. Well, if you had the fabric going the other way, like two pieces together, then it wouldn't match up, right? So with the grain, what I did was I used one 12 by 12 piece of cardstock, and I made sure that when I cut, whatever angle this was at, then this piece needed to also be like, like this. Not like this, because then you would have a different grain, but if the piece was big enough, I would have just cut it like this, right? But you want it to kind of like parallel. You, I moved it down and I moved it over and I did it like this. This piece goes up here. So I just moved it down, moved it down over here and cut it like this. So they were all, when I pieced this together, all the grains on this skirt was facing the same way. 
So when we put it together, it looks, look, this is just without tape, right? Obviously, because you can see me doing it. It's not magic. I mean, you can't see the seams. It's just, it's so incredible. And literally, this is the first time that I've done it. My husband's been telling me for a year, and I didn't do it. Um, I have no explanation for why that happened. <laughs> that's just, you know, I chalk it up to being married, and that's what happens. So on this piece, before we put it down, let's tape together um, this piece. So just like we did with the black background, you want this one to be as seamless as possible. We want to push it up against each other and really tape down all of it so that there's no movement. That's one piece. I'm going to scoot that over. We're going to do this side. Same thing. I think I really like the way I tape that. So I'm just going to make sure when I'm taping this, the edges, and I'm pushing it, really pushing it up. And the glitter cardstock is thicker. So it's easier to push up and um, and tape. That's just one more. <laughs> okay. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna flip it over, and it's gonna look amazing. I mean, I just couldn't believe it. It's kind of center, right? Because it's the skirt, and I mean, it would have been worse if it was up here. But still, it's it's kind of like in a like your eyes are drawn to it. And look, the seat, like from my angle right now, I swear to you, I'm not exaggerating. I cannot see the seams. So I love it. Okay. Um, the last thing is this. Now this piece was one, but I sliced it off right here. And I tried to do a deliberate slice. It looks a little wonky. I, I could have done a better job right here, but I separated it on purpose because I felt like with the white, you were going to be able to see the seams. So I'd rather just say, hey, this was meant to be in two pieces. Okay, so here's the legs. All right, I think everything is, looks pretty good. Oh, I'm missing, okay, I'm missing an ear up here. I don't know if you can see, oh, it's off camera. That's her ear in the corner, and I'm missing her fingers over here. That's what I was missing. Okay. Did her leg fall to cover right? I don't think it did. Okay, so try to look from above, and I'm looking in the camera. I feel like this piece needs to go down a little bit more. This goes down. Oh, you know what? It's because I did that deliberate slice, so I'm going to do that. All right, I think everything looks pretty good, so let's tape her down. Now, the skin, let me show you what I used. It's this. It's from Michaels. It's Craft Smart. It's called the Blush Romance Pad. Um, it's normally $20. I only buy it when it goes on sale for $5. And sometimes during the $5 sale, there's an extra 20%, so it's in the $4 range, which of course, right? That's the only time, oh, my goodness, sorry. I wanna make sure I'm still recording. That's the only time I buy that, and I buy it like five packs at a time. The colors that come, you'll be surprised at how useful it is. Even though it's looking very pinkish, it's, this is what I use for Cinderella today. So, because I don't want all the princesses to look exactly the same, but you can see it's a wide range of acceptable skin color for your princesses. The, then, and I love this package. I'm gonna double check today if it's still on sale, but this pastel sampler is amazing. I love the pink, the peach, the green, um, all the colors. This is the yellow that we used today and the light blue today. It's um, normally, I think, $10. I got it for five on Cricut, plus your access um, and all that. But I have an affiliate code, so if you can click on my link to use it, that would be awesome. But I'll tell you when to buy this. And I bought, I 
20 packs. <laughs> no joke. Because I love that color. Um, they're great on cake toppers, and it's so shimmery, and it photographs well, so I just love it. Okay, we are ready. So I'm going to move her just a little bit so you can see me taking from the bottom up. So I think her feet is in now. So let's start taking her down. I'm going to, with the leg, I'm going to take my double-sided tape, and I'm just going to take a piece like this. I'm going to hold it down, and the shoe we can mess, it, mess around with. But I'm just going to flip it up and put a little bit. Obviously, don't bend your cardstock because this the it's so light that it's going to show every crease. It's going to show all sorts of glue, which is why I like to use double-sided tape. And sometimes if it does get ruined, I will just cut a copy and then put it right on top of the, the piece. Oh, and then out. Okay. Um, and I'm, I typically will use products from the Dollar Tree, but do not use double-sided tape from Dollar Tree. It is literally worth a literally and figuratively worthless because it's only a buck, but um, it does not work and things will fall off. So let's continue with the shoe. Now with glitter cardstock, you can use your glue gun. So I'm actually, because I'm out of my tape and I don't want to go get some, I'm just going to use my glue gun really quickly, okay? I'm just going to make sure it's in. And this is a new glue stick, so that's why you got to pump it a few times. Try to make sure it's in there. And here we go. I can feel it. And I like it. It's super smooth. So here we go. And just press down. Right? And then the heart, I'm just going to grab some glue on the side. And then now this foot, so same thing. I just have my glue gun sitting here and I'm just um, grabbing it on the side like that. Oh, my heart. Okay. Um, now, if you can see the tip of my shoe right there, it's kind of flopping up. What I like to use there is I will take one of my glue dots and scrunch it up into, into a piece that will fit because you don't want it to um, go past your cardstock. If you go past your cardstock, it's going to be really, really obvious on, against the black. So you want to make sure you crinkle it up, make it fit in there, and then press down, and then that piece is down. Okay? All right, so this is good. Let me see. Now, if you like the challenge of doing 48 inches, you can, of course, look in my library of my channel, and um, you can do Snow White, or you can do actually any princess. But what I really like is this, um, this version, the toddler version, and the reason is because everything's kind of broken up into chunks, right? So that means even though this is 48 inches, the fact that really only the skirt has seams in it is pretty amazing, right? Like, because if you just think even in 10 inch increments, right? This is 10 inches, 10, 20, 30, 40, right? You can easily, if we had done this at 40 inches, I'm pretty sure she would have been seamless. Definitely at 36 inches, she would have been seamless. So um, that's why I like this image. What I don't like, for example, is if you had um, like, Ariel is a tough one because she has so much red hair, or like Big Bird, Elmo, um, the Hulk, anything that's one color, you need things to break up the image. Like if you think about um, the Grinch, right? He's all green. But what I, I found an image of the Grinch, and I did the Grinch before, and he looked amazing because I found one where he's wearing a red hat, he's got
got like this fur, white fur trim, a red jacket, and then his legs. And where his legs were super skinny at the ankle is where I sliced it. And so you could, and then with the um, green glitter cardstock, you couldn't even tell that there was a slice there. So those are the things, I'm, when I talk about image selection being very important, that's what I'm talking about, is you need things to break it up in order to help you make it seamless. You can't make something seamless if it's all just one thing. Like, I don't like, I try to avoid doing Peppa the Pig because there's nothing I can do. I mean, there's, <laughs> okay, I wouldn't say nothing, but close to nothing. Like, you're basically, it's not about skill at that point. It's really just about what can I put in there to hide? I, I can put a flower in there, things like that, right? But I feel like with Cinderella, we made um, like smart choices. Like we sliced it, how we sliced this, how we sliced this and the hair. Like those are all things that were um, kind of like, you know, we thought about it and it made sense to do. Um, whereas I feel like when you're just adding things to hide the seams, like if Cinderella had, if I did one of her friend birds or whatever, I'd put it right here like I did with Snow White, and that's kind of, I feel like that's cheating, even though this is kind of cheating. I don't know. It's different somehow. <laughs> All right, so these small pieces, I'm just using my glue tape. Um, I think you can see that. And I'm just putting it down. I'm gonna do the, I don't know what you call this, the lighter blue piece down, because then my skirt will only have one place to go. So, um, and I'm actually, you know what, I'll use my glue gun, because it's a pretty big piece. And what I like about this glue gun is it does have two temperatures, so I'm definitely using the lower of the two because it is light cardstock, so I want to make sure. Now this dress, this top part, there is a seam running right here, so I'm even if it doesn't really match up, I'm going to try to move it over just a little bit to hide that seam. So I'm going to move the hand over a little bit. I think that works. So maybe, like, you know, it shouldn't be this far over, but the seam is right here, so I want to make sure I've got it. So I think with the, with the, you know what, I think it's good, I don't know what I'm thinking. Okay, I'm going to flip this up a little bit and glue it down. Okay, I'm going to let that sit there. And I'm going to do the same thing with this skirt. I'm just going to flip up the skirt and glue it from behind just to make sure it's there. And then I'm gonna come back afterwards and stick little glue pieces down to get this piece for instance. But for, for right now, I just wanna make sure that my piece is down where it should be. Okay. That. We got this. Let's do the top of this. Okay. All right, let's get the hand. Now with the hand, I'm going to flip it over, right? And I'm going to use my glue tape runner, and I'm going to get the fingertips to make sure that they stay down. Now with the glue tape, you want to make sure that in here that we get rid of like the, the webbing from the glue because you just don't want it to, sh it's going to show against the black cardstock. So I just want to get that out. <clears throat> okay, so that's down. Let's get this piece down. Okay. 
And this piece, I'm just going to lift up a little bit, grab my glue gun. And I don't want to put a lot of glue. I just want to put enough for it to stick because I also don't want to get it so hot <clears throat> that it, excuse me, that it, um, that you can see like it scorches through and you can see from this side. With the dark blue, it won't matter, but with the light blue, you might get that with the glue. So you just want to make sure that we don't scorch it. All right, with the next, because with the light colors, you're definitely going to want to use your glue tape. down pretty well okay I'm going to scoot her down and see it's pretty easy to put it together right it's so awesome she's so big and so the pieces are all really big I really really love this piece okay so now let's do her hair now um I also like to use my scrap paper for my glue so save that <laughs> When you take it off the mat, okay, here we go. And then I'm just going to double check my notes on what else I have to tell you. Yeah, I'm getting so old that um, I need notes. <laughs> And I kind of put it down lightly so that I can still have like movement before I make sure, before I settle it down. Okay. Okay. Now with this one, it's going to be easier because the tendril right here. So I'm just going to flip it over. Now, if you're wondering why I'm not worried about it, um, about the stability, all of this goes on a foam board, and these pieces typically don't get touched by kids. It's obviously not going to go through a wash or anything like that. So, for the most part, um, if you get enough tape on here, it's going to stay on. Some of these that I did for myself, I've had for a year about, and I've taken them to my Michaels class courses where I teach um, people how to do off the mat there. So these things travel in the car. Keep in mind, I have a five and a half year old, her friends come over. So these things have, have been touched, but not like manhandled because they're so big and they're usually up cropped. And if you're selling these, they, um, you know, they're typically at, typically at the dessert table. And then afterwards, I've had a lot of people tell me that it goes into the into their bedroom, the kids' bedroom, the nursery, and so it then hangs on, on a wall. So it doesn't need like crazy glue. All right. Okay, so all we have left is her face. And what's nice about her face is because we have that black extra layer down there, we can start to, I'm gonna just flip her Flip her around so that I can see her better. Um, this is where this piece comes in really well. This is We Are Memory Keepers, the quick stick. So let's make sure that we like where everything is. So can you see this? Yeah, okay. Always hard to see the my camera it looks good. Okay, so I what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna take this little piece and pick it up like that so that I don't move everything else around it, okay? And then and then move it over here. Is this okay? 
want to make sure I don't put glue down on the wrong side. So normally I like to do the lips in glitter cardstock. Well, I like glitter cardstock in general, but oh, I did put it on the wrong side. Oh man, okay. So it's supposed to be on this side, but you're gonna be able to see it. So I'm gonna leave it like this. <sighs> I need to recut it. Okay, and then let's put this one down. Let's hope I get this one right, jeez. But because they're the toddler version, I did um, I did just regular cardstock for that lip. Oh, like, I, like a little slut. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to do this little dot right here. Um, this one, I might just do a glue dot, but I think her legs are covering the glue dots. Yep. Okay, here we go. So I'm just going to take this one out. And I'm just going to use my, my hands like that and stick it on. Okay. And then stick it back on this thing. Hopefully it goes. Oh, the glue's... There we go. Hold on. <gasps> that didn't work. Okay. I'm going to put it down by hand. Okay. Hopefully not too much weight. Okay. Um, I'm going to do this side. And you just want to make sure that the glue dot is all behind the eye. Okay. This one, I'm going to hold this down as I push it down so that nothing else moves. Okay. And then I'm going to do this piece. And can you even see it right now? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Just want to make sure I'm still. Still on camera. Okay, here we go. And then let's do this side. I can't believe I did that with the lips. That's such a bummer. So, okay. At least it's just the lips. Okay, I'm gonna flip this over and do the eyes. It's pretty good, all our stuff here. Okay, so now we can take this, flip it over, tape down this. So. And then you just wanna pick this up so that you can line up the tip here. Now the other thing that I want to show you is if you can see her face, so anywhere that it's enclosed, right, you can contour out and so you can do the black, but over here there's an opening. So what I did in Design Space, and you'll see in the tutorial, is that we took a copy of this and we we took a circle, I think, and we put it right here so that we enclosed the eye so that we could get a full black covering of the face. So now we have no seams there. All right, so now that's going to look amazing. So i got to put the earrings down. So let's do a glue dot there. And then we have um, her ear that needs to go down. So I'm going to do another glue dot. Just make sure that that glue is only on the cardstock. Okay, so now we just have the face. We'll flip it over. I'll take off her upper lip because it's on wrong. <laughs> All right, and on here, because.
because there's the black cover, we can use our glue gun. So I'm just going to do this real quick. Flip it over. Turn it down. Yay! Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm going to flip back to this one so you can see. So, Don't mind the funky upper lip. <laughs> We're going to fix that. Okay, so. But let me, oh, let me see if I can. Can you see her skirt down here? Seamless, even though it's three pieces, right? That's bananas. Okay, so let me put that down. Let's move this out of the way. So now we're going to deal with the foam board, okay? So let me move all this stuff out. For the foam board piece, all you need is you need a mechanical pencil or any kind of pencil. I do prefer my mechanical pencil for no reason. Um, and let's move all this stuff out of the way. I'm going to get our board. Now we're going to need two boards because it is 48 inches. So we're going to do the first board first, okay? Move all this stuff out of the way. Keep your glue gun on because we are going to glue it to the foam board. And all right, so let's lift her up. Okay. So we're going to put her down and let me change views. Okay. So I think you can see everything. All right. Now, I'm not going to be too concerned that her hand is off the mat because it's going to be stable. It's just a few fingers. It's okay. So we want to make sure we get the foam board up to here and then we'll do the extension foam board from here up to her face, okay? So for this bottom half, you're going to take your pencil and we're just going to follow the outline. So just trace all the way around. And then you're going to take your, I, I seriously like my Cricut knife blade. And when I say knife blade, sometimes people think I'm referring to the blades that you put on your Cricut machine. So I need the X-Acto knife. All right, so we're almost done here. Um, I think I started there. So now we're just going to slide her down. And I think, yeah, you can see the pencil marks, okay? All right, let's slide her down a little bit more. Here is my knife blade, and you'll see how I cut this. Now, the other thing is I was working with a dull blade for a while without realizing it, because the only time I use this is for this. So it didn't occur to me to switch out the blade, and so I wasn't cutting all the way through. You do want to keep the black, the black board on the back, okay? You don't want to rip it off. Because when you rip it off, it still works, but your integrity um, takes a hit a little bit, okay? So it's not as strong when you take away this top layer. So all right, so I'm just going to start cutting just so that I can get around it. Okay, here we go. I'm going to start here, and you want to try to keep it smooth by doing um, like a single motion, like cutting all at one time, like one, like that. Okay, so can you see this? I'm cutting way inside. It doesn't matter because there's a big chunk of hers that's going to be on the foam board, and it will help keep it sturdy and steady. So don't worry about, you just want to be inside the lines because you don't want this to show at all.
be, so you're going to have to lift up a little bit. Because, you know, the pencil mark is so light on the black. Okay, so now I'm off my mat. <laughs> So this is around the foot, so I just want to be a little bit more careful when I'm doing the foot because I want to, it's going to be standing, so I want to make sure that um, this piece gives us support on the foot. doing this and I'll show you what it looks like from behind and I'll show you what, what the other characters as well. So that's going to look good. Now we got to get the rest of her. So I'm going to move this out of the way, and I'm going to go get one more board. So I'll be right back. Okay, so here we go. Now we already know she's right here, so we're going to line this up as best as we can to trace the rest of her body. You want, the, the other board was straight across. We didn't do anything with the top. So you want to align it so it's butting up to this one, okay? And then pencil. And I know her head is not completely in the frame, but you know how to do this. We're just going to do the outline. Now, oh yeah, you saw the eyelashes? I'm not going to cut around the eyelashes. I'm going to do a straight cut in case you were wondering. Her eyelashes do not need support. As well as this tendril, it's going to get chopped off because it's too hard to cut the foam board that thin and cleanly. So I'm just not going to do it. Okay. So now I'm going to move her over quite a bit. I'm going to move this down so that I can pull this down to cut. Okay. So, which is a little bit more difficult. And I want to give this a lot of space because this is going to be glued to the other board. So normally I would have just chopped it off right here, but I wanted the shoulders to make sure that I have a lot of room to glue. Okay, so... I don't want 
this to rip off. I'm not sure. Okay, here we go. Now, whenever you lift the knife up like that, it just doesn't cut through. And you can feel it. It wasn't a clean cut. sure that she fits on top of this though, that this was cut correctly. I know she's so long, it's so hard to work with this thing. Okay. I know that we lost my place. Okay. have to let me know if you like the 48 inch one. I know if we did this 30 inches, like Snow White over there is 24 inches, Rainbow Bright is 30 inches. Um, so they're still pretty sizable and they look great on a cake table. So you have to let me know if this is worth the effort. Um, I wanted to do it just because it was a challenge and we already did Snow White. So I wanted my daughter to have sort of like her little squad. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to flip it over, and let's really glue this side down to make sure it's good. So just a thick layer. And normally by now, I would have already switched, um, added another glue stick. So I'm definitely loving the fact that I'm still on my first stick. Okay, once this dries, we're going to flip it over. And then we're going to put her down and then we're going to glue her to this foam board. And then we're done. Okay, put myself in there. 
And then you'll have to let me know. So I'll do my ending that I normally do. Um, post your comments on Instagram, Facebook, or here on YouTube. Let me know what you think. And then also, I'm totally here to help you with your own projects. So I will do a tutorial just like this and then walk you through it because I feel like everyone kind of has the same request. If you want a birthday banner or a cake topper or an off the mat character, and so everyone can still learn from it and all the special requests that you have, um, someone else may have that. So I really do love to do those tutorials for you because I feel like you learn a lot and you still have to recreate it in your design space. And so that way you're, you're also learning. So I learned by watching someone and then doing it. So I had a really hard time when I first started with design space. Like I had a friend who recommended it and she was super busy with her Etsy shop. And I swear there were times when I'm like, all I want to do is slice out a hole and I don't know how to do it because I was grabbing too many things or whatever it was, right? All those little things that you need to learn, all the workarounds. Oh, my thing is still stuck to this. But it was pretty dry, so you didn't see me crying out in pain. <laughs> all right. Okay. I know, I'm being so impatient. Okay. I think we're kind of good. And this is on, I love this Cricut self-cleaning mat anyway, so it'll be fun. Okay, so let's put her down. Now what's important about gluing her down is I like to start gluing her like at the feet and then slowly like get her here, here, here with the head being last. Because obviously if you glue the top and the bottom, you're not going to be able to get to the middle part. Um, so I just want to make sure that I say that so that you don't make that mistake because I've made that mistake. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna lift up the foot. Okay, get that down. Lift up this foot. Okay, then I'm gonna flip her around. And then I'm going to lift her like this and slowly glue my way up to her head, okay? Yeah, so I just did Snow White, was it yesterday? I'm like losing my head. And my glue gun was seriously giving me problems because I kept having, you know, you can see we're doing a lot of glue. So I'm going to put one more glue thing in now, which is nice, and I'm only changing it once, and this will definitely last us through the end. Okay, and then just pick up where you left off. Now this is where the seam is, so I'm just going to do extra right here to make sure we're good. to this